Without any waste of time this morning, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I want to welcome our speaker, our guest speaker this morning. Uh, she's my lady, she is my sister in Christ, and uh, we, we have worked together with this uh, wonderful sister of Christ, in Christ. And uh, I know Sister Tuli, uh, God has used her before, and I don't doubt, therefore, that this morning there is no way that God will use her once again. Sister Tuli, you are welcome to this platform. Sister Tuli is one of the very, very first people that we started this ministry with uh, at the very initial stages. At the in very initial stages, she was uh, part of this ministry, and therefore we want to welcome you, Sister Tuli. Um, over to you, over to you, my lady, over to you, Sister Tuli. Can you just check that everything is fine? Unmute yourself. Um, Thank you. Check that everything is fine. Can I see you? Ah, there she is. There she is. Wonderful. You look great. I like your smile uh, this Thank morning. You. I mean, great. Thank you, Mdala. Thank you so much. Over to you. Thank you, Mdala, and thank you very much for the kind words. Um, I greet the children of God in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, I, it is a privilege for me to be speaking before you this morning. Um, and the title of our short devotion this morning is A Memorial to His Faithfulness. The title of our devotion is A Memorial to His Faithfulness. And we are reading from the book of Joshua, and the chapter is chapter 4. We are reading from verse 7, from verse 4 to 7, and then we are going to skip to verse 20 to 24. So verse 4 to 7 says, So Joshua called together the 12 men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan. Each one of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder. Take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of tribes of the Israelites, to serve as a sign among you, to serve as a sign among you. He says, in the future, when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. And we go over to Joshua, um, the verse 20, um, verse 20 to 24, and he says, And Joshua set up at Gilgal the 12 stones they had taken out of the Jordan. He said to the Israelites, In the future, when your descendants ask their parents, What do these stones mean? Tell them, Israel crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. The Lord God did to the Jordan what he had done to the Red Sea when he dried it up before us until we had crossed over. And verse 24 says, he did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful and so that you might always fear the Lord your God. He says, he did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful and so that you might always fear the Lord your God. May God bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name, amen. It says, take up stones. Are these stones weapons? Yes, they are weapons, but they are not carnal weapons, but mighty in God, bringing every soul and depressing thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Now, why would God tell them to pick up stones as a memorial or a monument? In my thinking, I'm thinking it's because we are human and we forget and we therefore need reminders. The Bible um, mentions the word remember 121 times in the Old Testament and 27 times in the New Testament. So yeah, we do, we do need reminders. 
So in verse six, Joshua says, take up a stone to serve as a sign among you. A sign is a token or an object that conveys a meaning. It is a notice that gives direction or warning. God is saying, in a world of uncertainty, trouble such as never was before, you need a notice that will give you direction that, hey, it may be tough, but there is a God. In the midst of death of loved ones, losing jobs, business projects failing, family relations in turmoil, you will need a reminder of how God came through for you in the past. When darkness seems to overwhelm you, you will need a sign that says he is the light. Verse six continues to say in the future, our God is so thorough, he is so detailed. He is not a God who only cares about your present. He also cares about your future as well. So he prepares a table, a table for you for now. And he says, I know you will get hungry in the future. So here's a doggy bag. He says, in the future, you will face challenges, but here's a reminder of how powerful I am so that when the challenges come, they do not overpower or overcome you. Verse six also continues to say, when your children ask you, in verse 21, it says, when your descendants ask, parents, what kind of inheritance are you leaving for your children? In your homes, have you built altars or memorials of people's faults and misfortunes? Or have you built altars and memorials of God's faithfulness? Are you leaving your children with the blessings of reminders of God's love and power around your home? Or are you leaving them with generational curses of pride, self-sufficiency, where God in, is not given his rightful place and honor? Are you making memories that will empower your children? Are you creating for them an environment that radiates God? Verse 24 tells us that the Lord came through for them so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful. He did it for the encouragement of his children here on earth. You and I, our family members, our friends, our colleagues. He did it so that when troubles render our days meaningless, the reminders will be there to give meaning that there is a God who parted the Red Sea, the Jordan, a God who, who fed the widow of Zarephath and her son, who fed the 5,000 men and their wives and children. Quickly, we are going to look at some practical ways of creating memoria memorials. Um, please note, we are talking memorials and not idols. We are talking reminders and not replacements. Journaling, you can start a journal where you write down your, um, the victories God has won for you so that you can always refer back to them in times of trouble. You can also plant a tree that stands as a reminder of what God has done for you. You can buy a pot plant with which every time you water, it will remind you of God's faithfulness. Those who are gifted can write a song or poem about God's goodness. Around your home or your office, you can write sticky notes that will serve as reminders of his love. Lastly, but not least, we can have Thanksgiving ceremonies like the one we are having this morning so that we can appreciate the goodness of the Lord and be empowered for the future. Now, God has come through for you today so that your testimony can encourage someone. He has healed you so that your children may know that he is a healer. He has given you the job so that your neighbors may know that he is a provider. He has released you from the slavery of sin so that your friends may know that he is the savior. Today, the question is, won't you create a memorial to his faithfulness today? Won't you give a testimony to the Lord's goodness this morning? Ellen White says in Councils for the Church, page 359, we have nothing to fear for the future, except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us and his teaching in our past history. 
Let us therefore raise our Ebenezer, our stones of help, our constant reminders. Let us create memorials and give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and faithfulness. Amen. 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 My sister, please pray for us. Shall Thank you so pray? much. Thank you. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, our Lord and Savior, we come before your throne of mercy. This morning, we want to thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. We want to thank you for your goodness towards us. We want to thank you for the testimonies that you have given us this morning. And we ask, dear Lord, that as you continue to bless us, may you help us to be a blessing to others as well. Forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and prepare us to meet you in the class of heaven. This we pray in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.